In this presentation, we will record deposits to start our business, deposits from the owner, and deposits from a bank loan. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Within QuickBooks Pro 2019. Here we are in the QuickBooks homepage. We currently have the open windows open. The way to open the open windows is to go to the view tab and the open windows list. We're going to enter the transactions that are often transactions that will happen towards the beginning of a business. And that is to put some money into the business, that being by the owner and a loan. In this case, we're going to have a loan that we're going to take out from the bank and we're going to have the owner that's going to be putting money from the personal account into uh, the business account. Now these are transactions that are typical at the beginning of the business, but aren't things that we expect to see over time a lot of times, meaning they're not transactions that are going to happen all the time. We're not going to take a loan from the bank on a daily basis. We're not going to have the owner put money into the business on a daily basis. Hopefully they're taking money out <laughs> on a, a somewhat regular basis once the business starts to make money. So for that reason, it's not really one of the items that fall into our vendors or customers or employees type of flow charts here. So these types of activities, these activities that have um, forms related to them are typically activities that are going to happen all the time. And of course, a loan falls outside of that as does an investment. So what we want to do then is there's a couple ways we can enter this into the system. It's going to be, in essence, a deposit. So we could enter a deposit with the deposit screen over here, record a deposit and, and put it directly into uh, the business in this format, or we can use the register. So we'll take a look at, at both ways. I typically prefer using uh, the register to enter this data into the system. So we will start off with that format. Now there's a couple ways to get into the bank register. You could go to the check register down here in the banking section of the home page. I like to use the drop, the drop down menus because these are there no matter what, no matter what's open, even if the home page isn't open. So I tend to use them. So I'm going to go to the banking up here and we're going to go to the use register. Now, when you say use register, you might just automatically think it should go to the uh, checking account. And usually that'll be the default, but if you're in some other screen, say you're in accounts receivable screen or something like that, then it might default you to some other register. So in other words, there will be a register for any type of balance sheet account here. And that's QuickBooks attempt to use this kind of register format to avoid using debits and credits. So the register then is something that uh, a format we typically are probably used to seeing in some way in a bank account. But QuickBooks also has a register in a similar way for all of the accounts. Uh, so we, we got to make sure in this case we are choosing the bank account. We're going to have deposit going into the checking account. So we're going to choose the checking account and say OK. And we have uh, our deposit screen here. And this should look kind of familiar if you've ever you know, written the check and actually uh, entered the information into the uh, checkbook. This looks similar to a checkbook. The only thing that's really going to be different here is that we have this account uh, window which may be something we don't use as much when we just enter the checkbook in other words when we write checks we typically have who we're writing it to we have the payment amount and possibly a memo well here we're going to need some added information this check register means that we're going to do something to the checking account either increase it or decrease it and the other side of it's going to be because there's got to be two sides in every transaction is going to be this other account so we need to group it in this other account so in this case we're going to have a deposit that we're going to be recording and the deposit we're going to make it as of 01 uh 10 and 2019 all of our transactions are going to be in 2019 uh clearly if it was working in current time this date would be probably today's date and we'd just be able to enter in there uh today's date but in in our case of course we're working in a problem, so it's probably before or after. We're going to have to enter uh, the date here. Now, this screen is usually going to give us a number that's going to be automatically generated with our check number because we, we told QuickBooks to do that. And that's beneficial most of the time. But here we're not writing a check. So anytime we're not writing a check, then we want to make sure that we don't use this number because that number is going to be a check number. 
So we can write some other indication. I usually write you know, DEP for deposit that we're going to have here. Now we could put a payee. It's actually coming from ourselves though. So it's not mandatory to have a payee in this case because we are the payee. We're going to make sure that we are in the deposit side now. So the deposit side, not the payment side. Important to distinguish between the two. This is going to be increasing the checking account. And 65000 is what we're going to uh, transfer from one to the other. And it's going to go into uh, another account now. So this is going into the checking account. What's the other side of the entry going to be? Well, we're putting the money in. We're the owners. So the owners are putting money in. It should go into some kind of equity account. So if we look at our, our drop down here, it's going to be in order if we scroll up to the top. Checking account, we've got other asset accounts, we've got liability accounts, and then the equity accounts, which include opening balance equity, draws, and owner's equity. So we're not going to use opening balance equity because that's kind of like QuickBooks default account, like a mistake type account, or them telling us that they put something there that's kind of funny. So we're not going to use that. Draws is when we draw money out of the company. And we typically track that periodically and then roll it into the uh, owner's equity. And then owner's equity is the, is the account that we're going to use. We're a sole proprietorship. We're going to put it into owner's equity, that representing the, retain, the earnings that have been accumulated, plus any investments, plus the, the draws will roll into there as well. Um, if you're used to seeing that as the owner's capital account, just another name for it, uh, the default for QuickBooks is to call it equity. Uh, owner's equity so you could uh, you could change it to to owner's capital i uh, also note that if you want to track the investments separately in another account in a similar way as the draws are then you could create another account called investments owner investments and see how much money is being put in over a certain time period and then roll those investments into the equity account at the end of the time period so in our case we're just going to use the uh, owner's equity here or equity account and then a memo is is good uh owner investment or something like that owner investment into the company now it's important to note when you're working with the check register it will not uh record it until you either hit enter if you hit enter it'll it will record it or select the record down here if you go somewhere else and check on this if you go to the financial statements before doing so then this will not appear so i'm going to hit enter and it's going to say, hey, you're entering something to the retained earnings account owner's equity. That's not something that we normally do. Uh, so it's, it's asking us, do you really want to do that? We're doing that here because it's an owner deposit. Usually this equity account is going to be used as something that will uh, record the accumulation of earnings, meaning the net income will close out to it at the end of the time period. So we're going to say, yes, that's OK. And it'll record. It'll beep usually once it's recorded, and that'll give us an indication that it has been done. Let's go to the financial statements now, see what uh, QuickBooks did with that. We would expect it to decrease the, uh, the or increase the cash account and put the other side to uh, owner's equity. Let's see if that is the case. We're going to go to reports up top. We're going to go to company and financial, and let's go to the balance sheet. So here we are in the balance sheet. I'm going to make it as of the end of the full year that we would be working on, which is uh, 12 31 one nine. And here we have it. So there's our, our uh, checking account now has 90,000 in it. If we double click on it, we see nothing's in here until we change the date range. I'm going to have the beginning date range be 010119, the beginning of the year. And then there's our 65. So we started at 25,000. That's our beginning balance that we put in there, you know, just as that's what we had before we started. And then here's our, our deposit. Now, if you go into there, even though we were in the check register, if we zoom in on this, in other words, we're going to use the auto zoom it's by double clicking on it. So I'm going to double click on it. Notice it doesn't go to the register here. It goes to a, a transfer screen here. And that's going to be one of the, of, of the forms that QuickBooks can use for uh, a deposit so it's being driven by this form to record the deposit when we put the information into the register so just be aware that you know any transaction we do quickbooks will default typically to a form that will kind of drive the transaction and it'll it'll give us an indication of what's going on so we want to know what those forms mean in terms of the financial statements 
And, uh, and so even if we enter the data in some other format, it will typically kind of drive it with a form. If there's no form to drive it by, then it will typically call it a, ge a general journal, a journal entry. So I'm going to close this out by hitting this little X up top. We're going to close this out. We're going to look at the other side, which is the split account, owner's equity. That's what we put the other side to. We're going to close this out, and we'll go back down to equity. It's in order, of course, balance sheet, assets, liabilities, and then equity down here. Here's the owner's equity. If we double click on the owner's equity and we change that first date to 010119, the beginning of the time period, here's going to be the other side. So it's if I double click on that, the zoom, the auto zoom, we get that same form. So those are going to be the two sides that happen. I'm going to close this back out, close this back out. And of course, what happened is assets went up from the accounting equation. We got more cash in the company. It doesn't increase net income, of course, because we didn't earn that cash. It's not like we have revenue, but it did increase equity, meaning it represents the fact that the owner has claim to that money. So cash went up and owner's claim or equity goes up. Now let's enter the second deposit. So I'm going to, I'm going to close this back out. We'll, we'll be back here, but I'll close this back out. Now, instead of using the check register this time, I'm going to leave this open. I'm going to go back to the home tab and see another format that we could do this. This will be a bank loan. We're going to take out more money. This is going to be a bank loan that we're going to get. And instead of putting it into the register, we could go directly to the deposit screen here. So we're going to deposit money into the, into the checking account directly. So we went to the bank, got a loan. There's going to be a deposit into our account. We're going to record that here, going to uh, the record. And then we're going to go through this. Now note, that if we got a loan from the bank, they might put it directly into the checking account. Where would we get this number? How would we know when it happened? We'd get the uh, online checking or we would, uh, when we get the bank statement, of course, at the end of the month, we would have this transaction that we would record. Obviously, if we put the money in personally out of our checking account, then we would go to the bank and put that money in and we would know that transaction and record it. If we got a, a bank loan, the bank might automatically put the money in there which we would see at the point in time it was put in there and or at the point in time that we do a, uh, a bank reconciliation at the end of the month, it would be in our, our bank account. So we're going to say this again, it's going to be uh, January 10th, 2019, the first day of the year we will be working on. It's going to go into the checking account, of course, here. And so that's our only cash account that we have. That's usually the default. So it's going to be correct. We're going to say that um, received from and we're going to say it's from Chase. Now, Chase, I'm going to set up. That uh, hasn't been set up. We don't have anything there yet. So I'm going to hit Tab. And, uh, and it's going to say, do you want to have a quick setup? Or do you want to set up the full item? We're going to do a quick setup because we don't want to hit the address or anything like that. We just want to put in the information necessary to record the deposit. So we're going to have the quick add. Now we can add as a vendor, a customer, or an employee, or other. Now this is chases our bank that or a bank that we're going to get a loan from. So it's not going to be a vendor typically. It's not a customer, not an employee. So other seems to be the best option here. So we're going to say it's other. It's none of these items. We'll keep it as other. If you put it in there as as a vendor, that you know wouldn't be too bad. You know wouldn't be too harmful or anything like that. Uh, and it kind of depends on what other types of transactions might happen with a particular uh, company as well. But we're going to put it into other and we're going to say, OK. And then so this form here, the fact that we're filling out this form because it is a deposit form means that it's going to increase the uh, the bank account, the checking account, just like we did at the register. So this form means it's going to increase the checking account. The other side, then we have to have some other account that we're going to uh, be using here. And we're gonna call it loan payable. I'm gonna start typing in there loan payable and you'll see that it'll it'll pop up down here. Now, if you wanted to see the dropdown, I'm deleting that. If you see the dropdown, you would check your accounts up here and go through and say, it's gonna be a liability, we're gonna owe it back. So it's in order assets and then liabilities. We have a loan payable here. If you were, and that's because it was set up by the system, by QuickBooks. So QuickBooks set up the system and set up our chart of accounts, gave us a loan payable. If they had not done so, then we can we can set up a loan payable. And we want to make sure that as we do that, we set it up as a long-term liability account or some type of, it might be current, 
we're going to say it's long term difference being that it's going to be due in over a year's time period. We're not going to pay it back within a year. We're going to pay it back uh, longer than a year's time period. Uh, that's the difference between long term and a current liability. So we're going to choose loan payable and we're going to say we can have a bank memo. I'm just going to call it bank loan and, and it might be useful to have like the loan number here or something like that. You might use the, the last four digits of a loan number or something to, that would reference the, the actual loan, especially if you're in a, in a type of industry that has multiple loans that you're going to be tracking for different things. Say you're buying equipment or something like that and you have multiple loans that you'll, you'll be uh, using. I'm going to skip the, the check do not check number. I'm going to skip the payment method. And we're going to go over here and uh, just enter the amount, which we're going to say is 50,000 tab. And that's going to be it. We see the deposit down here, 50,000. We're going to say save and close, save and close. And now let's check and see if that did what we would expect it to do. We would expect the checking account once again to go up. And the other side of this transaction should be going to a liability account loan payable. So let's do that again. We're going to go to reports up top. We're going to go to the balance sheet again. Reports, drop down, company and financial. We're going to go to the balance sheet. And I'll change that date to 12-31-19. That's, that's the year that we're working in. Checking account, we would expect that to go up. Looks like it did. We're going to use the zoom, double clicking on it to go in there. Change that first date to 0-1-0-1-1-9. And there we have it. So now we have this deposit of the loan, 50,000. So here's the, the loan account. And now it's, it's a deposit form we're using here. It's going to the loan account. The split is the other side of it will be the loan. If we double click on it, it'll actually go to the deposit form this time because we used a deposit form. We used the driving form instead of going to the, to the uh, register and entering it into the register. So I'm going to go and close this back out. And we'll check the other side of it. We'll close this back out. The other side of it is going to be a liability. So here it is, long-term liabilities, loan payable. This account just appeared here. We're going to, uh, well, actually, it, it was there before. We're going to double-click on it. And we're going to start it out at uh, 010119. So we had a loan at 22 before, 50000 here, 72000 is where we are at at this time. Double clicking on this again, zooming into it, we see the, the deposit here. I'm gonna close this back out, close this back out. So we see what happened here, of course, the cash went up and the claim to the cash is not in owner's equity now, but claimed by a third party, by, by the bank. No effect on the income statement, no effect on profit and loss. We didn't have any revenue here. It's not revenue, it's something that we owe back. We got cash today, we owe it back tomorrow or some time in the future uh, over a year from now hopefully it's long term and and so uh, cash went up and then the claims to that cash are not ours as they would be as if we put the money in as the owner but a third party in this case of course the bank for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info